Every holiday season is significant in retail, but this year brought a special milestone for Lewis Drug, which marked 80 years in business in 2022. We sat down with CEO Mark Griffin to look back and ahead at this ever-changing industry. 80 years. Congratulations, 80 first years. of all. 80 years. I look younger. Does it feel it? Yes. You haven't been here for all 80 <laughs> years, to be clear, right? No, my father started the company. <laughs> no, the February 10th, 1942, February 10th, across from the State Theater. And his name was not Lewis. Let's get no, that out name, of the way. Your name, name is not Mark Lewis. No, his name is Griffin. He had another partner. And the other partner, we actually had two partners. And one of the partner's name was Lewis because in South Dakota back then, they had to have a pharmacist as a partner. And his name was Lewis. They figured, well, that's a good generic name. Sure. So let's use that. Sure. And we kept it. It stuck. Even though he left two years later because he didn't think we'd make it. Here we are. Here we are, eight, eight decades years later. And, more yeah, later. Yeah. and do you get called the Lewis family just once in a while? Yeah, I, I, I've been called Mark Lewis a lot. But Mark Griffin, who became CEO in 1978, has been part of this business since childhood. I grew up in the stores, uh, did, a, did a myriad of uh, jobs. Um, I used to pick up the parking lot when it wasn't uh, pick up assist. I'd bend over and pick up things in the parking lot. I used to blow up balloons for uh, promotions. I used to sack um, in the, at the check stands at Christmas time and some of my favorite memories. On a day and, like today, you'd probably be out shoveling the I'd walks. be out shoveling or I'd be standing in the Christmas tree section outside with my parka on sending, selling uh, Christmas trees. And that can be a cool uh, occupation, very what, cool. What memories, though, of growing up? A lot up, of memories. Really? Yeah. Did you always see yourself going into the business, or was there a time when you thought, I don't want anything to do with this? It was, I, like, in the back of my mind all the time. I liked it. I thought I could, um, um, it would be there eventually. Uh, I, I, you know, lived in Tucson. I lived in Phoenix. I lived in Atlanta and did various things. Came back to Sioux Falls and uh, was a uh, broker for A.G. Edwards. And then one of the, my dad's partner asked me if I want to go to work at Lewis. And I said, It's interesting yeah, that the partner asked you. Do you think, had they He did, because my dad this? didn't want to ask me. Yeah. I had to take a pay cut. Oh. But it's worked out okay. Now, when this business started, it was also a very interesting time in history. It was during World War II. And the, the history of a business that goes back that long in retail, exactly. it's just, it's so changing. And it's rare, frankly, right, right. To, to have been in retail this long. What made it work in those early days? We, we uh, supplied a lot of basics for people that during the war um, could not acquire basic goods like um, soap, um, grocery items, um, Again, supply chain issues, yeah, right? We didn't have <laughs> the more things no, change. No, no, no. <laughs> True and, supply uh, chain exactly. issues there. But we, uh, um, for example, one of our, we've been promotion ever since the beginning. So one of the partners said, let's do, uh, being across the state theater, let's sell popcorn for five cents. And so all the people would come over from the state theater or if they're going to movies, plus the customers we had, and they'd buy their five cent popcorn and they'd take it over there. It drove State Theater crazy, but that was the beginning of our, and that's an example of some of the basic things that we used to sell during the war. Um, and we used to have stuff stacked to the ceiling. The, the little store downtown was 7,000 feet. You know, the store at Southgate we're sitting in is about 30. To give you an idea, it was maxed out and uh, we, we did a lot of business because we were unusual. We've always been a little unusual. Finding the niche though, you know, whether yes. it's the popcorn or just exactly. whatever people are looking for yeah. that they, they might not even realize that they're mm -hmm. looking for. And actually where we are sitting, which is South Minnesota, is very close to one of the first stores, right? Well, the, the, uh, the store that's now Lewis Square, which is up, up the street a block. The corporate headquarters now? Correct. Uh, was uh, the store that was built in a cornfield that was the laughing stock of my father because he bought the property and they said you you can't go out in the country like this in, in a, in a cornfield and build a store and he built a it was seven thousand seventeen thousand feet which was big back really then. big at yeah, the time yeah. right and that store expanded to 60 eventually but um, it was 
very successful. Oh, he and had vision, clearly. He did, yeah. How, what else was he like as a leader? Uh, he was very, um, he was very conservative financially. Um, he, uh, maybe his partners were a little more aggressive in terms of growth, but um, very smart, very um, financially brilliant, I would say. John Griffin died in 1986. You know, I actually had him to learn from um, in the store approximately seven years, and I was, I remember I was 35 years old when he passed away, and it was a, it was a big blow because we had a project going at 26th and Sycamore, and then we had the um, Lewis Square going. We had a lot of balls in the air, and, uh, and I, I had to learn fast. And uh, I drew from that knowledge that he shared with me, so I won't forget that. Well, and now, how many stores are you at? Uh, 60 and counting. We've got four of them in the ground or on paper ready to be built. How have you decided how and, and when and how fast to grow? Because that, that's part of the trick, too, in expanding. It is. Um, we think because we're, we've been in the area so long, we have a sense of which communities are going to work and which ones aren't. And one of the, one of the biggest um, events in the history of Lewis was, was being a, uh, becoming a partner with Sanford. And uh, when about was that? That was 1998. Okay. And we decided that, you know, they, they wanted to buy a chain and they, and we said, we'll take the retail part as long as we can be the general partner and you guys take the home healthcare division and which was a good fit. And we did that with 10 stores and now that 10 store um, has become 46 stores around Minnesota, Iowa, and South Dakota. What is it about that relationship, that partnership that just works? Trust. You know, we trust each other, we leave each other alone, and we're successful together. And we truly are. And uh, it's been a great relationship. A healthcare crisis, the pandemic, illustrated the strength of Lewis Drug. COVID was a difficult time for a lot of businesses. Um, people, I like to think, felt comfortable coming to Lewis Drug. Um, it's not too big, it's not too far. Um, tremendous team to take care of people. And bad as it sounds, we thrived during COVID. We did extraordinarily well. You also somehow managed to have toilet paper on the shelf when <laughs> well, no one else did. I remember um, this. You know, take that back 80 years. Remember downtown? We got all the basics during the war. I mean, we've always hung our hat on the basics and we're reliable. And I think that hit home during COVID. And it felt comfortable when people were very comfort uncomfortable. Right? Exactly, exactly. You, you hit it right on the head. And we still are. So, I mean, that's... Yeah. And uh, maybe they didn't want to go to a big box store. Maybe they didn't go out, you know. Sometimes uh, during those times of challenge, you don't want to walk into an 80 or 100 or 150,000 square foot store and shop. You don't want to park in the parking lot and walk all the way, especially if there's exposure issues when you get in the store with crowds and things like that. Here, it's uh, convenient and it's quick and it's comfortable, you safe. Know, we have covered multiple new store openings with you and you're always evolving. You're always looking at, and they may not be major changes, but minor tweaks to the merchandise mix, the shopping experience, mm -hmm. the, the layout. What do you think today's shopper is looking for? What are you integrating into these newer stores? Uh, people are more than ever um, time compressed and they're looking for speed. They want to be speed shopping and we're, and we're a good speed shopping place if you want to be. If you want to walk in and speed shop, but we'd love to give you a cart, have you walk through the store, which we do as well. Um, and some of those things, we, we try to enhance that as much as possible with the layout change the layout, tweak the layout, and um, make that even better than it was on the last one. When I look at the Lewis business model, 
you don't see a lot of this regionally, nationally, in, in retail. These more, I'll say, general merchandise stores, but I mean, you, you have a lot of product categories mm -hmm. in this store. How have you managed to, to hit on a formula that clearly still works despite all the disruption in retail? It's all about the team, and it really is. I know some people say that we live it, yeah. and uh, the Lewis team is truly extraordinary, not only in this area, but nationally recognized is how good they are. About 1,400 people work for Lewis Drug, and many have for decades. You know, that's one of the things I'm most proud of is that when we do our um, recognitions, dinners, etc. Um, you know, I'm standing up there handing out awards that are 35 years, 40 years, 44 years, 40, I mean, it's amazing. And uh, I'm so proud of that. And that's, that's one of the key elements to why we're still here and still successful. This week with days to go before Christmas is a critical time in retail. At Lewis, the hope is to build on a banner year. This year has been actually quite good, very solid. And, uh, you know, for a number of reasons, um, one of which is pharmacy has been very strong. You know, the tridemic that you've read about is, is challenging for people. Um, and we're here, we're there. I mean, we, we take care of people. And we practice, I like to say, guerrilla retail because not only do we do that in the general merchandise area, we do it in the pharmacy. And if we can't get amoxicillin from our regular sources, we've got four or five backup sources that they could ship to. We don't have to wait like one of the big boxes for 90 days for our cycle to go through to ship. You know, we'll scramble, come up with it. And we did that with children's Tylenol because those are two things, for example, that are really a problem right now in this country because of the tridemic with the kids. And by that, RSV, we mean RSV, flu, exactly, COVID. Is um, we have the children's Tylenol. And, and, if, and if we don't have exactly the size you want it, you know, we'll communicate with a provider and say, uh, what can we substitute or what doctor would you recommend? Uh, we take the time and we'll come up with creative methods. And that's another reason we're successful. Um, and I think this is going to carry into the first quarter of the year because this um, tridemic, whatever you want to call it, is not going to go away anytime soon. The business also hits a sweet spot in retail, Griffin says. You got Amazon on one end, you got Walmart on the other end. And do you want to pack a lunch to go to a big box store? A lot of people don't anymore. Remember what I said about speed, efficiency? Time compression? Maybe not. Is it totally an Amazon world? No, because of everything going on in the world. And Amazon has their problems too. Um, and particularly in medication, both those ends of the spectrum don't always work too well. And we're in the middle and it works. The coming year will bring more new stores for Lewis in Northeast Sioux Falls, Watertown, and Pipestone, Minnesota. Griffin now spends part of his winters in Florida, but most of his time is in Sioux Falls, where he's known to work six days a week and sometimes walk the stores on Saturdays. What is it that keeps you going? What, what do you just love about this industry? I really enjoy it. It's in my blood, and I can't imagine playing golf every day. Um, I'd get bored. Retail is a constant evolution, constant change. There's always something going on. There's always something selling. Uh, there's always something new coming in. That's pretty exciting. As you think about the future, have you, have you thought about how long you plan to continue doing this? Indefinitely. You know, I, my father was active uh, until he was probably 75, 76. I'm, I'm not there yet. So I got, I got some ways there and uh, I don't know. You know, I'm, well, I'm playing by ear. I feel like, and we've actually never talked about this, I don't think, but over the course of so many decades, there must have been opportunities to get out of this if you had wanted to, and people who maybe would have wanted to acquire Lewis, and you've clearly said no. Um, is that the case, and, and why did you say no, if it is? For those reasons, because I really enjoy it, but, um, 
it, it's it's a. Um, I'll give you an example. Shopco sent me a letter about ten years ago and said we want to buy your company, and I said, and I wrote a. The guy's name was Duncan. He was the CEO at that time, and I wrote a letter back to him and I said. That's a coincidence because I was going to call you to see if you wanted to sell out. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, fast forward. Wow, right. Fast forward. Right, right. We bought nine Shopco pharmacy department files and we own them. And uh, it's been very successful. We have, we have all the, the Shopco business inside Lewis now. That's a great. Isn't that interesting? It's a great story. But that <laughs> says a lot because, yeah. as we all know, right, where is Shopco today? And Yes. And where is Lewis no today? Yeah. Marching into year 81 mm -hmm. um, and beyond, I am sure. Mm -hmm. What kind of leader would you describe yourself as? How do you, what do you think your employees would say about you? Uh, I think I'm just a team member, sometimes a coach, sometimes a captain. Um, I'm a listener. Um, I think you, the more knowledge you gain and the more, the more you listen, the better leader you are. Um, I think that's key. I'm uh, thrilled to work with a, such a talented team of Lewis people, and uh, they make me look better every day. We'd like to thank MarketBeat for sponsoring the CEO series. Stay tuned for more conversations with CEOs making news in 2023. And of course, for all your latest business news, stay with us at SiouxFalls.Business.